Washington, this is BOA News. French media report the data recorders found in the wreckage of a Russian passenger jet in the Sinai show a bomb brought down the plane last week, killing all 224 on board. French news agency source says authorities, according to investigators, the so-called black boxes show everything was normal aboard the Russian metro jet. Then 24 minutes into the flight, suddenly there was nothing, it says, with one of the boxes registering a loud sound and a violent sudden end, strongly indicating that a bomb went off. Islamic State militants claim responsibility for blowing up the plane, but have not given any proof. The U.S. moved Friday to boost security at airports in the Middle East where passenger and cargo flights take off for the United States. Even as investigators continue to probe whether a bomb brought down a Russian jetliner over the Sinai last weekend. Homeland Security Chief Jay Johnson made the announcement. Later, White House spokesman Josh Ernest was asked about the security plan. This is just a prudent response and the exercise of an abundance of caution uh, based on information that has been learned about this uh, possible terrorist attack in the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, and so this is just uh, um, uh, a series of steps uh, that the Secretary of Homeland Security believes should be taken out of an abundance of caution based on what we know uh, about what might have happened uh, aboard that uh, Metro Jet Flight uh, 9268. White House spokesman Josh Ernest said the expanded security procedures will take place at fewer than 10 airports in the region. This is VOA News. The global chemical weapons watchdog says it has confirmed with utmost confidence that mustard gas was used during an attack on a town in northern Syria in August. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons said Friday the gas killed an infant and poisoned two others during fighting in the town of Morea. The group did not say who used the outlawed chemical, but activists and other rebel groups blame the Islamic State, which is also fighting the topple the Syrian government. The United States suspects Islamist State has used mustard gas in the past. Political campaigning in Myanmar has drawn close to a close now ahead of a national vote that could bring to power Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy Party. Even if we win 100%, we would like to make it a government of national reconciliation in order to set a good precedence for our country, that it should not be a zero-sum game of winner-taking-all and loser-losing everything. This is not what democracy should be about. Myanmar's President Tain Sein has again pledged to hold free and fair elections with the result reflecting what he called the people's genuine desire. Western nations and human rights groups are calling for free, fair, and transparent elections on Sunday. The national election will be the first since 2011 when after nearly 50 years of military dictatorship, ended in the country formerly known as Burma. President Obama has rejected the controversial Keystone XL project, a plan to build an oil pipeline to transport Canadian crude to the U.S. Gulf states. After an interview review, Mr. Obama announced the project is not in the national interests of the U.S. Here's Mary Alice Salinas. 
The Keystone XL pipeline project had become a centerpiece of the debate over President Obama's environmental agenda and stated commitment to take bold action to curb climate change. With the U.N. summit on climate change set for Paris in December, Obama rejected construction of the oil pipeline that would have carried crude from Canada to U.S. ports along the Gulf of Mexico. The State Department has decided that the Keystone XL pipeline would not serve the national interests of the United States. I agree with that decision. The decision drew sharp and quick reaction from members of the Republican-led Congress who backed construction of the pipeline, saying it would create jobs, reduce oil prices, and U.S. reliance on foreign oil. Mary Alice Salinas, The White House. And to get more on this story and the rest of the hour's news, check out our website. You can find us at voanews.com. I'm Steve Norman in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.